Dr. Michael Eisenberg is a medical doctor specializing in urology and an expert in male sexual function and fertility. He is both a clinician who sees patients as well as a research scientist, having published over 300 peer-reviewed articles on male sexual function, and he is considered one of the world's foremost experts in male sexual health. Today, we discuss a broad range of topics important to all men, including erectile dysfunction and function. Today, you'll also learn some very interesting surprises, such as the fact that a very, very small percentage of erectile dysfunction actually stems from hormone dysfunction. Do you observe that um, men are coming in you know, who are older than 40 and have testosterone levels and presumably free testosterone levels as well um, that are still very high. You know, I, I, the reason I ask this is that I think we've all been told and we presume that testosterone levels decline with age and one would expect some outliers. And of course, we don't know whether or not those guys in their 90s who have the testosterone levels of that match the averages of men in their 30s didn't have even greater testosterone levels in their 30s. And of course, what is special about these individuals that are you know, maintaining high normal testosterone levels into their uh, later years? Yeah, that's a great question. I think this is such a common question. Anytime we talk about testosterone, I think or anytime we talk about most sort of uh, clinical tests that we do, you know, what is average, what is normal? Um, so we do see great variation. I mean, I think just like you're saying, I usually let everybody know that, you know, usually testosterone peaks, you know, kind of early 20s and it tends to go down probably 1% a year forever. Uh, but there are people that have very, you know, very, very high levels. I, and, you know, to my surprise, sometimes these men, you know, I've seen 80 year olds that certainly have the highest testosterone level I'll see, you know, for six months. Um, you know, why that is, I think is not certain. Maybe it has to do with, you know, I would think with everything, there's probably sort of a bell shaped curve and everybody's a little bit different. Um, but androgen sensitivity, you know, sensitivity of the receptor, you know, they make it more efficiently. But I have not really noticed, again, because at least in clinical practice, you know, when patients come in, they come in with a complaint. And so even men, you know, with very high levels, they may have some of the same dysfunction in men with low levels. So I think with low levels, you can try and treat that and that may be the solution. But for men with, you know, these, what we would consider high levels, um, you know, there may be other issues going on. So is there a, not one for one, but is there a tight correlation between obesity and testosterone levels? I would say that you cannot predict. I think that sort of would be the take home. And so I think that, you know, more information is always better. You know, when I see patients in clinic, um, you know, some patients are walking around, you know, with you know, everything is totally normal and they're very healthy. All the numbers come in at the normal range. But sometimes when men, you know, look totally normal, they talked about taking care of their life, they exercise, you know, five, seven days a week, their testosterone levels can be very low. So even despite, you know, having what we would consider should really give them, you know, symptoms, um, they're able to compensate, you know, maybe they've lived their whole life and that they don't know what normal is. So, you know, men with lower testosterone levels have higher risk of, you know, heart disease, diabetes, mortality, the same studies exist for semen quality as well. Um, and, you know, again, they may have sort of a similar relationship and explanation why that may be. But I think it's hard to just predict, you know, based on appearance, what, you know, testosterone will be what semen quality be, what testicular function will be without actually getting some objective data. You know, there have been studies that show that men with more comorbid conditions, so obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, as these sort of stack up, we see a decline in testicular function, so lower testosterone levels and lower sperm quality. So I think, you know, taking ownership of your, your health, I think is important as well. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, fertility tends to be one of the first touch points that some men have with healthcare. You know, because generally what brings men to the doctor, it's usually pain or, you know, kind of a problem. Testosterone is actually a fairly common problem that we see in fertility clinics. Um, I would say that you know, estimates say maybe about one in 20 infertile men are that way because of testosterone. So I think when, you know, people get testosterone from different places and hopefully, you know, whatever provider you're getting it from tells you that one of the side effects of this um, is lower sperm production. It's actually been tested as a contraceptive and you know, with some other agents, it can actually be fairly effective. So we just want to make sure that, you know, if men are starting testosterone, they're doing it for the right reasons and they're doing it safely. I think about testosterone replacement therapy, although as we were talking about before we started recording, I, I am really on a push now to rename <clears throat> what people call TRT, testosterone mm -hmm. replacement therapy, because indeed some people have low testosterone and need it replaced, the right. R in TRT. But I think what you're referring to if I'm not mistaken, is that there are probably millions yeah. 
of young men and older men taking exogenous testosterone, injections, creams, pills, pellets, you know, any number of nasal sprays now, you know, any number of different uh, routes of delivery of exogenous um, testosterone. And that um, dramatically reduces one's endogenous testosterone production. We're doing some cardiovascular exercise each week, maybe doing some sport or some resistance training too, um, uh, with the intention of maintaining all around good health. What are some of the other don'ts? Um, I'm going to assume that smoking cigarettes or vaping cigarettes is bad. Are there any studies that have looked specifically at vaping and sperm quality or testosterone levels? Um, and is there any evidence that uh, smoking cigarettes is good for testosterone levels or sperm production? Because I'm guessing the answer is no. I feel like nowadays we just say don't smoke. Um, so smoking is certainly something you should not do. There have been you know, lots of studies that do link that to you know, lower quality. Again, all the different measures that we look at. Um, also looking at fertility, these men tend to have a longer time to get pregnant. Um, alcohol, I think, is another very common question that we get asked as well. And I think for that, there's, you know, I think less of a strong association that we've seen. So there, um, you know, there have been some studies that show that very high levels of alcohol, and I guess that's sort of subjective, what some would consider higher or not. But, you know, when you get above maybe 20 drinks a week, there have been some effects. But usually, that's a lot of drinking. I would think that's a lot. Are there any common over-the-counter medications that can negatively impact sperm quality and or testosterone? Things like um, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, Tylenol, Advil type stuff, um, you know, ibuprofen, acetaminophen, um, things of that sort that I and others might not be aware of. I'm not. I'm not probing for anything in particular here. I just. I. I know that um, you know a lot of over-the-counter drugs have effects that we're just simply not aware of. Yeah, I mean, I think we probably need more data, but I think currently we think all those are safe. I'm curious about the pituitary. Pituitary gland, as many listeners of this podcast already know, is a gland that receives signals from the brain. Um, the gland sits near the roof of the mouth. <laughs> um, I think that's fair. Um, and releases critical hormones into the bloodstream that control the output of testosterone from the testes, as well as output of hormones from other glands. Um, I know a number of people end up playing sports like football or rugby or even lacrosse or even soccer. I've read there are data on this, you know, they're heading the soccer ball quite a lot or martial arts or they get a head injury at some point. And um, I certainly hear a lot from people who played these high contact sports and then to their surprise, later they have diminished testosterone levels. I also work with a number of military groups that talk about this.